What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Uh, this past weekend, I got second place at a League Cup with Zorark Lycanroc, and I am going to go over the list and do a tournament report for it. So, um, on the screen is the list. I'll go over it real quick, and then I'll go over all my rounds and <clears throat> go into whatever detail I remember from them. So we have the 4-4 Zorark line, which is pretty standard. Um, not playing any of the stand-in Zorark, I don't think it's necessary. I'm playing one Buzzwall Forbidden Light, and this card is stupid good, especially in this deck. Um, I used this card a lot as a one prize attacker, even when uh, Sledgehammer wasn't hitting for its maximum damage. It was just nice to, uh, like games that I started with it, I really liked starting with it because it was nice to just be able to hit my opponent for 30 or 50 damage um, with a one prizer while I uh, waited to evolve my Zoruas and Rockruffs. So, and it, of course it's really good because Sledgehammer does 120 if your opponent has exactly four prizes. I also used to swing around a couple of times, um, just a really, really great card. Uh, I played two of the new 70 HP Rock Rough because it has more HP than the old one, and just one corner in case corner ever came up to be useful. It has not in testing and also did not come up useful in the tournament. Two Lycanroc GX. Um, you guys should all know that this card's great. If you're newer to the game, you might not. Um, so it's 200 HP stage one. Bloodthirsty Eyes is amazing because it has the gusting ability that when you evolve like in rock from a rock rough from your hand, you may bring up one of your opponents benched into the active spot. And then Claw Slash 110 is great for one-shotting opposing Zorarks. And Dangerous Rogue GX does 50 times the number of opponents benched Pokemon which usually does a lot of damage for a one-shot kill. Then for our Psychic Buzzwall techs, we have one Mew EX, which can use the attacks of any Pokemon in play. And we have one Mewtwo from Evolutions for its Psychic Attack that does 20 plus 20 more for each energy attached to the opposing active Pokemon. And then we have three Tapu Lele, so we can use Wonder Tag to get our supporters when we need them. Um, two timer ball, uh, this, the, uh, I'm terrible with flipping cards. I never get lucky at all. I got, I think out of 10 timer balls played over the day, I got three double tails and zero double heads. Um, uh, multi switch is an amazing card and, uh, I would never play this deck without it. Uh, two parallel city are great. It didn't, uh, come up too much in the tournament, but. I, in testing, I know that it's a card that I really want in the deck. Um, Professor Kakui is great. Don't play the deck without it. Um, one Acerola is really good. Um, you could play a Max Potion, but I prefer Acerola. Everything else is pretty standard. Um, I switched up to four strong, four DCE, and one fighting, as opposed to the old two three split of fighting strong, because Enhanced Hammer. Uh, it, isn't really in decks at the moment, so there's no reason to play less strong energies. Uh, I think that we're going to see an increase of Enhanced Hammers, though, so I might be switching that up depending on the tournament. Um, and I also didn't want to do just for strong for DCE because I like having the ninth energy, uh, especially since I'm playing Buzzwall. We have an extra Pokemon that we want fighting energy on. So just a brief uh, overview of the deck and some of the important cards and now I'll talk about the League Cup. So we had five rounds top eight. Um, round one I played against Anthony Alvarez playing Buzzwell Lycanroc. Um, I went second and I did not get to Bridget so I think I used Cynthia as my uh, first turn supporter. Um, he got a fairly good lead on me. I think he went up for, yeah, he took out uh, two one prize knockouts and went four to six. And then I 
knocked out his buzzwall with my baby buzzwall with strong energy choice bankakui um for 190 and from there we went back and forth until he was at one prize card and i was at two and uh on my turn at two prizes to one uh i sycamored no i played cynthia and also traded and i needed to get a cynthia and two trades and i needed to get a multi switch off of it and i missed the multi switch and then he won on the following turn um so i started out oh one uh Another thing to note is if I was playing poke, if I was playing Rescue Stretcher in my deck, I would have won that game uh, because I would have been able to get back my Mute Two. Um, all my puzzles were gone, so I couldn't get back my Mute Two or Mew otherwise. But if I had Rescue Stretcher, I wouldn't have needed to dig for the multi switch. Uh, granted that I hit the mult, granted that I hit the Rescue Stretcher, I guess I would have just had another out to winning because uh, my active had a Float Stone. So I would have just been able to stretch her back to mute two and then uh, attach DCE choice, uh, DCE choice ban. It might have just been DC. I think the active might have been damaged. All I remember was I was thinking if I had a stretcher, I would win here. Um, but I lost round one. Round two, I played against Mike Nui and he was playing Galisopod Garbador. Um, he went first and. I did not play Bridget on my first turn again. I didn't play Bridget at all throughout the game, either of these games. Um, and he had, I believe it was like a Wimpod Trubbish Wimpod start. Um, or Wimpod Trubbish Lele. Like, where's three at the end of his first turn? Um, and he got the Garbotoxin down turn two and starts swinging with the Galisopod. Um, but I was able to, uh, I believe two shot the Galisopod with a Zorark and just run through everything else that he benched down. Like Galisopod Garb just clunks out on you sometimes and that's exactly what it did there. Um, so after the first Galisopod, I just knocked everything else out one by one and I guess the Garbotoxin, I don't know if the Garbotoxin hurt him at all. Uh, I did feel blower it like turn four four or five but other than that i just got through with supporters um so round two was pretty easy because after he got his glycopod set up he just never got anything else going um round three i played against jason on and he was playing a buzzwall lichen rock um he went first and i did not use bridget again uh, at all the entire game. My first turn supporter was Cynthia three rounds in a row. Um, so, but it did not go as well for me as the first two rounds did. Even though I lost round one, it was a really close game. Uh, so round three, uh, Jason had a fairly good start. I went second, like I said, and I think I had like Zerua Rock Rough Lele as my board. Like Zerua Rock Rough Lele pass, or maybe two Zeruas. Um, but he just kind of ran through my board. I never got set up after not hitting the Bridget. Um, I don't, I'm not even sure if I ever attacked actually. Um, there was, there was one turn where I, uh, on my second turn, I had a Rock Rough, a Rock Rough active with Choice Band fighting DCE. And I Cynthia'd, and if I get, you know, a Timer Ball, Ultra Ball, or Lycanroc, and I get the Lycanroc, I would Dangerous Rogue as active Buzzwall and be really set for the game, but I just didn't get anything. Uh, and after that, he ran through me, and uh, at after he took prizes four and three, so he was at two prizes and I was at six, I just scooped because my board state was really bad. So I was one and two, but three and twos could make it, so I kept playing with my head up. Um, next round I played against Brad Brown playing, uh, Beast Box with, uh, Ultra Necrozma in it. It was similar to the deck that was on stream round five, day one at Madison. Um, but he was like, uh, we know each other as do I know all the other players actually. Um, but he was like, yeah, I know what you're playing and, uh, I think it's going to be rough for me. I was like, yeah, I'm playing Zora Rock. And he's like, oh, I'm playing, yeah, I'm playing Beast Box. It's not going to be fun. Um, so 
Aside from it being a poor matchup for him, he also wasn't drawing very well after his first supporter or two. And I just kind of ran through uh, three GXs in a row with, um, I believe, a powered up Claw Slash. So I had like a Claw Slash with two Strongs and a Choice Band. And I uh, knocked out some things with that and a Dangerous Rogue. And I either... I either 6 owed him or uh, took 6 prizes while he had 4. I'm not sure if he had 6 prizes left or 4 prizes left. Uh, but that was a fairly easy match because it was a good matchup and he also poor drew poorly. Um, next, I played against Jimmy O'Brien with uh, Ultra Necrozma Malamar. And I believe he might have been playing a regular Necrozma GX as well. I can't remember for certain though. Um... Again, a good matchup for me. Um, he, I believe he played Cynthia on the first turn. Um, this was also the first time out of five rounds that I got to go first. Um, so I went first and got a Bridget. So it wasn't like my other rounds very much. Um, and I got a fairly good setup. He got... Uh, Dawn Wings, no, not Dawn Wings. Ultra Necrozma Malo, Ultra Necrozma Inke Inke Lele, was his start, I believe. I remember I parallel cityed him and uh, Dangerous Rogue and Inke and knocked it out, I believe, and then knocked out a Lele. Um, at one point on his turn three or four, he rescue stretchered the Lele and used it to get a supporter because he went two turns without a supporter he used a supporter turn one but didn't use one turn two or three and he just hypnosis to me those two turns one of the turns it stuck uh but i pretty much just ran through the deck because again it was a good matchup and he was drawing poorly so it was pretty simple um so anthony alvarez finished as the only four one and my other opponents my lowest resistance was 40 so i calculated my resistance and i believe it was a 60 percent so um i was pretty sure i was making top eight and i did make top eight um anthony alvarez and frank diaz both uh scooped to their top eight opponents because they got their invites off of top eight so congrats to them um in top eight i played matthew playing buzzwall lycanroc uh, game one, I just felt pretty much in control the entire game. I went first, played Bridget. I had uh, three Zerua and a Rock Ruff as my start. So a Zerua active, two Zerua on the bench, Rock Ruff on the bench. Um, and I just started going in, uh, I believe turn two, I started going in with Mew EX. Because uh, he jet punched my active Zerua. I evolved a I evolved, evolved into a Zorark, Mallowed for Mew Floatstone, traded away uh, something for those two cards, attached DCE to the Mew, retreat with Float, and knock out his first Buzzwall GX. And from there, I kind of just ran through. Um, game two was a little more difficult. He went first, and he was able to be more aggressive than my deck was which Buzzwall is great at doing. Um, it did come down to, I believe we were both at two prizes, and I end him and um, took one prize, and I just had to see if he like got the Guzma, and I believe he was able to get what he needed. It was either a Guzma or Bloodthirsty Eyes that he needed to win there. Um, so he did up, end up taking game two. Game three, I was drawing pretty poorly, um, he was ahead four prizes to three. Oh, no, no, I was ahead four prizes to three. Um, so I'm sorry, I was ahead three to four. So I had three prizes left, he had four prizes left. So I was ahead, um, and he B stringed to a baby buzz and a buzzwool GX. Um, so I at that point, I was pretty sure it wasn't going to look good for me. I would have to knock out the Buzzwall GX um, and hope he couldn't 
get an easy knockout with the Buzzwool FLI, the baby buzz, so he would need to goose up a Zorak GX to knock it out with Swing Around. Um, but anyway, I have a Zorak GX active because it just took a knockout on something, and he... Oh no, I don't actually. I took a knockout with Lycanroc, and he uh, guzma up my Zorark that already had 30 damage on it. Um, and he had a Buzzwool Baby Buzz with a DC Fighting Fighting. Not DC, I'm sorry, Strong Energy Fighting Fighting. That makes more sense. Um, and I believe he meant to swing around. Uh, but he said Sledgehammer for the knockout. And uh, I was like, wait, no, Sledgehammer doesn't knock it out. And he was like, oh, I meant to say swing around. And I guess I motioned like I was about to call the judge. But he was like, don't worry, calling the judge. I did that earlier. I know that I don't get to take it back. So he was kind of cool about that. Like he understood, you know, you state the attack, if that attack goes through. Um... So, I had a Zorak sitting active with 10 HP left, and I'm at 3 prizes to 4, so I can seal it up this game. Um, I trade, I trade, I Ultra Ball something away, and then trade again, and I have no DCE, no Float Stone, no Guzma, no Supporter. Um, I have a Strong Energy, but I cannot get that Zorak out of the active spot. So he's just going to pretty much get the makeup for his mistake and kill it anyway. Um, so I attach a strong to my benched Lycanroc GX. And unfortunately I have to pass. So he does a couple things. Maybe attaches a float stone somewhere. And um, attach an energy for turn. And then he... Uh, sledgehammers again or swings around it doesn't really matter which one he uses this time and knocks out my active zorak gx going down to two prizes i then bring up my lycanroc gx which has two strong energies on it at this point um i oh know i brought up my tapu lele because it had a float stone on it um and then from there i believe i trade i ultra ball i put a lay lay down in my empty bench spot um and i get a guzma and i have a lichen rock with two strong so that's 130 150 no so my lichen rock ends up having three strong on it um and a choice band which is a knockout with claw slash on the uh buzzwool gx on the bench so i guzma that up and uh knock it out with claw slash and uh from there he is not able to knock anything out with his swing around uh baby buzz and so i just went on the next turn by knocking out the swing around baby buzz and that was top eight uh so i won that one two one and then game round top eight top four top four so we're moving on to top four and uh i'm playing steve zhang and he is using ultra necrozma malamar with a marshadow gx in it uh game one i honestly don't remember who goes first i know we both get good setups though um I definitely take the first knockout game one. These matches are kind of fuzzy to me because this round went by pretty quickly. Um, but both games, I uh, had a fairly commanding lead. Um, he was drawing pretty awkwardly both games. He was playing supporters and he was, you know, attaching energy and whatnot. But... Uh, he was just having some pretty awkward hands, it looked like, at least. And he also mentioned that to me after the round was over. Um, he did get to use his Marshadow GX game 2, but it wasn't paired with a pseudo Wudo Roadblock, so I just got an easy KO back on it with a Riotous Beating Choice Band. Um, so, pretty much my game plan was I knocked out... Game 1, I knocked out um, two Inkes, an Ultra Necrozma, and either another Ultra Necrozma or a Dawn Wings. And then the following game, I knocked out a Dawn Wings and Ultra Necrozma and the Marsh Shadow. 
Um, so it was pretty streamlined. Uh, they were pretty streamlined games for me. It's fairly easy because of the Bloodthirsty Eyes and Guzma. So I have a few outs to gusting up my opponent's Pokemon. Um, and then top two, unfortunately, I am paired against... Uh, Oh, what's left is me and Frankie Durso, and he is playing Greninja, and that's a pretty bad matchup for me. Um, I really tried my hardest, but game one, um, I went up three prizes, and then Greninja did Greninja things, and I believe I lost with two prizes left. Uh, game two, I felt a lot better about the game. Um... I went down to two prizes before he started taking knockouts, which is kind of like the goal. But I got ended to two and then never recovered from it. So I like if at any point, like I got end to two and then end myself and then he end and then I end. And if at any point I saw a DCE, I could have taken the game. Uh, but I wasn't fortunate enough. I still had a fairly large deck because, you know, the trading stops after shadow stitching starts. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't get the DCE, and Frankie took the top two in 2-0 against me. So, I'm happy with the second place. It puts me closer to my world's invite, and Frankie just needs, I think, a top four or a top eight now after getting first for his invite. Uh, so, congrats to him and all my other opponents. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Moving forward, moving forward with this deck, um, I am taking out... The second timer ball for a rescue stretcher and trying that out um, I might also try taking out the basic fighting for the rescue stretcher and I'm gonna work on including an enhanced hammer in here because I think Zora rock is going to become a bit more popular at least in my area in the next couple of weeks for cups so thank you guys for watching don't forget to check out check out flipsidegaming.com and use my coupon code celio for 10 percent off of your next order ten dollars or more and i'm also writing articles for them weekly and they're free articles so be sure to check them out if you need more pokemon content in your life i'll see you next time here on celio's network